You're listening to the Organize My Thoughts podcast, where we teach you how- Hello, family, and welcome back to another episode of the Organize My Thoughts podcast. This week, we're really going to be diving deeper into this conversation we've been having around routine and control. Usually when I do a podcast topic, it may be like a one-off thing where I'll give the summary of whatever God is telling me to teach about, and then I'll move on to the next one. But God has really been having me sit in this topic concerning routine and control and all of these other things. And so I want to continue to have this open dialogue with you guys and walk you guys through my real-time transition and just what God is teaching me um, in this process. So last week, I summarized about some of the lessons. And of course, we know God is a teacher, so he is always teaching. But in today's episode, we're going to talk about how to invite God into your routine. Now, the title of today's episode may sound kind of contradicting to what I've been talking about on previous episodes. But again, this is a real time journey that God is walking me through. And so while I started off talking about how God threw my routine out the window, I was under the impression that God doesn't want me to have a routine at all. And in some way that was true. But what I'm more so learning is that it's less about the routine and more about surrendering control. And so I use the word invite very intentionally in today's title of the episode because that's what really God wants us to do is to one, learn how to surrender control and also how to invite him into these spaces so he can help us be more productive and have more peaceful lives, etc. But just through this journey, I want to just share how my mind has been processing this shift because I know there are a lot of you who are like me who struggle with the in-between, right? There are some of you who are like me where you're either zero or 100%. God tells you to do something and you're on the extreme. And for me, when God threw my routine out the window, I was under the impression it's like, okay, God, you want me to scrap this entire system that I built and just follow you, you know, task by task. And what I didn't realize was, yes, there was a season, um, a period of time where God wanted me to lay my routine down so that I could focus on what was more important. And that was reprioritizing God as the head of my life and not all the other responsibilities and tasks that were on my plate. And so what happened was I went through this period again where God was directing me throughout my days, task by task, telling me, you know, what I should do first, what I should do next, et cetera. And he was really ordering my days. And I remember, you know, during this process of surrendering control, I got so frustrated because I was like, God, this doesn't feel sustainable, right? Like it feels like I'm always behind. And though I am grateful for this interruption or this intervention that you've done in my life, I'm frustrated because I feel like I don't have any control of what's going on. And it feels like things are just piling up. And so one, I really had to get adjusted to this new pace that God has me on where I'm doing things a lot slower. And um, I typically honestly don't really have a slow paced life. I feel like with everything that's been on my plate, I've been very used to doing things very quickly, having a lot on my plate. And so it's kind of been normalized. And so when God came in and interrupted it, It really frustrated me. And so, like I said, I got to this point where I was like, God, this new way that you're trying to do things, it doesn't feel very sustainable. Like, how am I supposed to manage all the things in my life? All these things that, you know, these are things that you have called me to do. They aren't things that I've just kind of picked up along the way. How is it that this routine that is working that you just want me to throw it all away? And so I began really pouring my heart out to him because I was very, very frustrated, y'all. Like one thing I always say is that God can handle your frustration. He can handle your anger, your raw emotions. And so I really try to be very transparent about how I feel with God. So that way I'm not developing like bitterness in my heart or anger because that can happen when we're learning to surrender control. Our flesh starts acting up. And so for me, I was not happy that, you know, I had to adjust to this new pace. And I remember after I got quiet, after I vented, I just sat still and I was actually in the shower and God said to me, I'm not asking you to throw away your routine. I'm asking you to invite me in it. And he said, it's not about your routine. It's about where you place it in your life. You place your routine above me. You place your routine 
as the way and the system that makes you successful in life. But really, it's my wisdom. It's being at my feet and it's prioritizing me that will get you there. And it's like, I don't know why that didn't click in my mind before until he said those words. But those words really settled me because at first, honestly, I felt like by having a routine, I was doing something wrong. In my mind, I was just trying to steward all of the blessings in the areas that God called me to do well. And so, like I said, having a routine was me stewarding my time. But when God threw my routine out the window, it's like I automatically thought I was doing something wrong. And it wasn't that I was doing something wrong. It's just that, again, God was trying to get my attention and he was just trying to refocus me, like recenter me back on him. And that's what made me realize that it wasn't about the routine, but it was just about God developing a habit of surrender, a habit of yielding in me. In order to do that, he had to do something that was drastic. He had to intervene in my everyday life. And so this brings up a whole other area where God is dealing with me. And it's that in-between, please. If you guys can relate, I tend to be a very black and white person. There's not a lot of gray area for me. I'm literally either zero or a hundred percent. And people that know me know that I'm like this. And so what I mean by that is I talked about how I was finding the balance between laziness and rest. When God was telling me to rest, in my mind, I was being lazy. There was no in between for me. I was either lazy or I was working hard. And so finding the middle ground has been a challenge for me. So circling back to when I was frustrated and I was telling God that I don't feel like this new way that he's doing things is very sustainable for me. And he was telling me that I'm not asking you to throw away your routine. I'm asking you to invite me in it. I was like, okay, God, well, how do I do that? Because I thought that I was prioritizing my time with you. I thought that I was inviting you into my routine. So you have to now show me, this is my conversation with God. I'm like, can you show me how to actually do that? If you guys are like me, you are very practical people. And like I said, maybe you get lost in the in-between between what God said and how to apply it. And so that's the place that I was in. And it's still something that God is teaching me. But the few things that he has told me that I believe that would be helpful for you is to one, not see God's intervention as a sign that everything needs to be destroyed. There are things in your life that have been built that God simply wants to build upon and to make better. It doesn't mean that every time God gives you instruction that you have to start from scratch. And that is something that I did not understand. But it actually makes sense as to how God interacts with us anyway. When we surrendered our lives and we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, God didn't say, okay, before you accept me as your Lord and Savior, you have to strip off everything and become a brand new person on your own. No, we accept the invitation for Jesus to come into our hearts and then we invite him in to be Lord of our lives. And that is a process where God is taking us as we are and he's cleaning us up. He's molding us. He's shaping us. He's pruning things off of us that don't bear fruit. He's doing all of this process of transforming us, but it all starts with what we already have. He didn't need to destroy us completely in order to for us to be used. And so, like I said, when it comes to our routines and the things that we've already kind of built, there are lots of things that if we just surrender our routines over to God, he can improve upon those things. Yes, there may be parts of your routine that need to be dismantled, but at the end of the day, they're going to be built back up. And so if you were anything like me, if God is interrupting your routine, it doesn't necessarily mean that everything that you're doing and how you're organizing your day is wrong. It's just that there are lots of areas for improvement. And I feel like that just takes so much of the pressure off of feeling like everything has to be adjusted at one moment. Like as soon as God tells you something, there has to be a 180 degree shift in order for you to start making steps moving in the direction that God is leading. It takes time to get adjusted to God's interruption. And he knows that and he's patient and he walks with us as we are, of course, growing and learning to trust and surrender to him. 
He didn't judge me when I came to him with my frustrations. He simply walked me through them, helped me to get to the root of them, and then gave me practical instructions to implement. So again, just to circle back to the question of how to invite God into your routine, it first just starts with a heart posture. Sit down with God, discuss any of your frustrations with you know, the new things that he's doing in your life, ask your questions, ask the hard questions, and just have an open dialogue with God. And this will really shift your heart posture and just allow you to feel like you're being heard. Remember that God is never going to force you to do anything. That's why the emphasis is on invite. And in order to invite God into any area of your life, you have to trust him and trust him enough to know that even as you have honest conversation and dialogue with him, that he will respond to you, that he's not judging you and he wants the best for you. Then once you have that open dialogue with God, you can begin to get more practical and ask God, in what ways can I invite you into my routine? And God will begin to give you very practical strategies. So for me, one of those things was is having regular checkpoints with him throughout the day. So I already talked about prioritizing your time with God in the morning. But now I'm taking that a step further and I'm setting in regular times to, again, check in with God, see if there's anything I need to pivot. I'm prioritizing prayer. For me, again, that practically looks like um, usually my time with God is around like seven or eight in the morning. I'm having a check in around 12, a check in around three, and then I have another check in at night. And that just keeps me accountable to make sure that I'm not running off doing my own thing and I'm giving God room to move. Another way that I do this is by keeping my schedule flexible. I'm very mindful now of how many items I put on my to do list because if I have too many things, then my to-do list can end up running me. And so while I'm still being mindful and intentional about what I have to do for the day, I'm making sure that it's not so much to the point where I'll get back in that autopilot mode. And so I've reduced the amount of items on my to-do list, which has actually been helping me get more things done because typically out of the day, I don't account for the amount of interruptions that I have when I'm focusing on a task. Again, I manage two teams of like, four people each. So I have people emailing me, texting me, a lot of like, you know, those type of disruptions that can pull me out of focus. So I didn't realize that by reducing the amount of items on my to-do list, I'm actually taking it into account um, all the disruptions that will come throughout the day. But it also just, just keeps me accountable to relying on God. And so I find myself even in between, you know, to-do list items, I'm like, God, can you just refresh me? Can you just give me new peace, new focus? Just checking in. It doesn't have to be a long, complicated process of inviting God into your routine. It's just practicing daily surrender. I believe that's the key that God wants us to get to is practicing daily surrender and knowing that there is a difference between rest and laziness. And if God is calling you to rest, that means that that has a purpose. If you are feeling very burnt out and you just need a moment to refresh, it does not mean that you are not a hard worker or that you are lazy or you're not doing enough. It's just simply checking in with your body, checking in with God and getting used to that, right? You have to give yourself time to adjust to the new thing that God is doing. And so that's what I've been learning. I hope that these things have been helpful for you. And I hope that it's been giving you some clarity on how to proceed and just embrace this new thing that God is doing. So this wraps up another episode of the Organize My Thoughts podcast. If you found this episode helpful, please send the link to at least two friends. And I will talk to you guys on the next episode.